Good evening and welcome into our home again. Um, tonight's devotion will be from Faith Alone, devotions based on Martin Luther. So let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No other way. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. I understand what Jesus is saying here in the simplest manner, so that it all applies to this one person, Christ. Jesus is called the way because he is the beginning, the truth because he is the one who helps us to continue, and the life because he is the end. For he must be everything, the beginning, the middle, and the end of our salvation. That is why we place him as the foundation stone on which the other stones are set and on which the entire roof is built. He is the first, middle, and last rung on the ladder to heaven. For through him we must begin, continue, and finally reach the life beyond. So there's only one Christ, but he assumes different roles in our salvation experience. In the beginning, it's hard to find the way. Then life comes more difficult as we continue to walk along the way. It becomes extremely rough when we have traveled on the way for a long time and are about to reach our final shelter, heaven. So if you hold on to Christ in faith, then you have started in the right place. If you remain with him, then you will be walking on the right path. If you persevere until the end, then you will be saved. Christ wants to pry our hearts away from trusting anything else. There is no other way, highway, bridge, or path other than Christ alone. It makes me sad, the state of Christianity today. As I look out, and I'm sure you probably do too, Hopefully you see it. There are a lot of churches and these televangelists and um, so-called preachers that are clinging to so much but Christ. I see them clinging to their own prosperity and their own wealth. Kenneth Copeland is here in the Fort Worth area and the man has a jet. And one time I was flying uh, with a friend and we were flying over his house and over his compound or whatever you want to call it and the pilot came out and yelled at us because he was on the end of the runway and wanted us to immediately clear the airspace so he could take off which is not right but I thought my goodness who are you and um, yeah I remember one time he was on with some TV preacher in Georgia and they were saying that the TV preacher he was helping him raise money to buy his own jet and the, the Kenneth Copeland said on there he said hey you know you got to help this pastor out to get his own jet he can't be he can't be flying on those airplanes he'd be on that plane uh, which is a tube full of sinners and I laughed and laughed and laughed and I'm like well that's where Jesus would be in a tube full of sinners right hello and then we have um, these pastors out there who are really false prophets declaring this and that, declaring that, that um, certain people and certain leaders in our s s culture and society are the new Jesus or the, the rescue or the savior that, that God has prophesied to come, or that our nation is, is how Jesus will return and that everything in the Bible is about the United States. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The United States isn't even mentioned. God doesn't care about that stuff. There's only w one nation, and that's the nation of God uh, in Christ Jesus, right? And it's just all over the place. I mean, churches that, that, that focus on um, false teachings, you know, churches that focus that good works are the way to heaven, churches that, oh man, have the underwritten rule that you uh, have to live a perfect life, churches that, that teach, well, you have to speak in tongues or have to have some conversion experience, churches that teach, well, if you sin, you backslidden, and if you die when you're backslidden, you're not going to heaven, then I'd be doomed because I sin every moment of every day. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Christ alone. Well, what is Christ alone? Christ alone is Christ alone. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one who looks at us in our sinfulness, in our wrongdoings, sitting in jail, having had an affair, maybe an alcoholic, fill in the blank with the sin, Maybe it's stealing a pencil from a coworker. <laughs> Still a sin. He's the one that looks at us in our sins and says, I love you. I forgive you. When we're sitting in the difficulty of the journey, the way of life, and we have a mental illness, or a diagnosis of cancer, or a parent that we're taking care of who's ailing, or a child who's died, he's the one that looks at us and says, I'm going to heal. I will restore. I give you comfort and peace and life. When we're on our deathbed and we're afraid, when we're on our deathbed and we don't know what to expect, yep, he's the one there holding our hand. And the moment we close our eyes in this world, it says, welcome to heaven. Welcome to your new home. 
He's the only one. He's the only one that matters in all eternity. Nothing matters in this world. Did you know that? Not your power, your wealth, your riches, your frame, fame. Not the kind of car you drive, not your past, not your present, not your made future. Not how strong you think your faith is or how weak you think it is. Not politics, not the United States, nothing. Nothing really matters in this world except for Jesus. And therefore you matter because he has saved you. You matter so much that he died on the cross and lifted his life from the grave to open heaven for you. By name, you. You matter to him so much that he gives you gifts and abilities to use along this way with his truth and his life. He gives you abilities to use along the way so that you may show others who he is too. So you do matter to God. Because in this world, if we as Christians don't take a step back and stop with that garbage, we are placing on the church and on ourselves and realize that everything is only and specifically about Christ. We continue to do damage to ourselves and the world around us. But oh, how beautiful it is when we take that step back and open our eyes, led by the Holy Spirit, and realize Christ is my all in all. He is my strength when I am weak. He is my shepherd who guides me through the valley of the shadow of death. He is my redeemer who buys me back from sin and death and the devil. He is the rescuer who lifts my life up out of the pit. He is the fountain and source of life and all water. He is the great and mighty physician. He is the savior of the world. He is our friend. He is our brother. Christ alone. Christ alone. Heavenly Father, forgive us in our human wisdom where we seek after what we think is best, what we know, and all of a sudden everything matters but Christ. And we all do that. Every time we sin, in fact, we do that because we make ourselves matter more than Jesus. So forgive us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, remind us what it means that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that he is the beginning and the end, the start of our journey, the end of our journey, and then the start of our eternal life journey. Help us to know this, to see this, to believe it, and to live it, so that we may learn to love you, love ourselves, and love others around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's a real honor to have you. I love you and I cherish you and I'm praying for you. The Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Have a great night. Bye-bye.